I will start my speech with answering one of the questions that people have asked me the most. Why I'm always wearing these extravagant, nice looking glasses? The truth is to protect the ladies from my practice gaze. Okay, now we go on to my speech. Venezuela is a place that is home to one of the most beautiful natural resources of the world. Here is Los Medanos de Coro, the biggest desert from the Caribbean coast. It is a desert surrounding Pal Jongo. This is Los Roques, a group of islands located at the north of the country. It is known for its coral reef and clear water beaches. Lastly, Pico Bolivar. It's the highest mountain in Venezuela. It was named after Simón Bolívar, the independence hero of Venezuela. It's the only place in the country where it snows and the peak is always covered by it. All of these beauties in just one country, from deserts to snowy mountains to crystal clear beaches, Oh yeah, of course, Venezuela is also full of beautiful people. The people of Venezuela are known for being all very warm and caring. In such a place, imagine you have a successful job, a group of friends you love, and a beautiful big house. What a perfect life. But, Suddenly, everything disappears. Si no te mata la delincuencia, te mata el hambre. It's a very popular phrase among Venezuelans. If delinquency doesn't kill you, the hunger will. Every single day is a struggle for survival. You have nothing now. What was once there seems like it was never there in the first place. You are only given the mercy of being able to have the lingering memory of the warm past. Now, you must face the core reality in isolation by yourself. You have to start from zero. My name is Tommy Fung, and today I'm here to share my story of finding the light in the darkness using Photoshop. I was born and raised in Hong Kong, but one day when I was nine years old, my family and I moved to Venezuela. I knew that I was not given the option to move back to Hong Kong, so I had to immediately adapt to my new surrounding, my, a new language, a new culture. Over time, without realizing it, I was having the best time. I was graduated as a graphic designer, and I found my true passion for photography. I started my photography business, and I have many lovely friends and family. Every morning, I could not wait to get up and create this, to create different, to create different things for my clients. Something that was graphic and humorous. I created this personalized digital yearbook that nobody else did, and people loved it. I had the privilege of capturing the most amazing memory of the students into one single book. My business was growing year after year. However, something was not right in Venezuela. A group of corrupt politicians destroyed the country. Power is controlled only by one party, where people's voices are not being heard and respected. It's a dictatorship disguised as socialism. The lack of safety is overwhelming. Probably kidnapping and murdering are unleashed. There's a shortage of food and all kinds of products because the importation traffic had declined to the state control. 
and the national production is destroyed by the reduction of investment. People are dying because there's no medicine. The health service is collapsing. Pregnant woman give birth on the floor because there is no bed. And the inflation rate is the highest in the world. According to IMF data, the inflation rate in 2016 was over 300%. In 2017, it was higher than 2,400%. And it was estimated that by the end of 2018, the inflation rate will be 13,000%. An average salary, including food stamps in Venezuela, is 1.3 million bolivares, just over $6. $6 are just about 48 Hong Kong dollars per month, which is just equivalent to less than two Hong Kong dollars per day. Now, parents in Venezuela are too poor to afford to buy even the basic food. Many of them do not eat so that their children can eat at least one meal per day. But even that is not enough for preventing their kids from dying of starvation. Daniel Bergino Merchant was only 17 months old when he starved to death. This is a picture of his father crying uncontrollably and hugging his son's coffin. This is so inhumane. In my house, the electric service was cut at least four hours per day. Without any warming, I spent five days without water. I spent at least three hours giving in the supermarket to buy what I managed to get a hold of. On several occasions, I was pointed at, with guns at my head during robberies. I lived my life with paranoia and fear. Can you imagine having to hide your items and money every time you go outside? Finally, I had two options. One, keep working in Venezuela and try to survive. Two, freak the country and start from scratch. I chose the second one, and on February 2016, I left Venezuela. I decided to return to Hong Kong because I was born here and my family lived here. It took me some time to adapt and rediscover the city. I met many new places, buildings, mountains, and people. Everything was so exciting for me, and I loved taking pictures of everything I saw. But I had a problem. I had no idea what I was doing with my life. I had no purpose, no job, no more photography business. I knew that I would not be able to have the same type of photography business as this market in Hong Kong is very different to that in Venezuela. So I had to look for a new job. This period was quite tough and hard. I felt like I was no one like a loser. I never felt so lonely before. I even started to question myself if leaving Venezuela was the right decision. But actually, I realized it was an opportunity to start something fresh, something different. So I took the initiative and I started to investigate what was trending, where photographers were going, their stars. I came to understand that Many, many people in Hong Kong are excellent photographers. They are taking absolutely stunning photos of the city, the urban landscape, the people in everyday life. It's very common for photographers to use Photoshop to treat the color, clear the skin, or create banners for marketing. But it seemed to me not many of them was using Photoshop just to combine photos to express themselves. And I realized that I love Photoshop and I'm passionate to create. So 
why wouldn't I give it a try? When I first arrived, I had the impression that Hong Kong was a very rich and developed city, but people did not seem to be happy. They are always stressed, in a hurry, and very negative. People have tired faces, depressing looks in their eyes, and some of them fall asleep while commuting. People all are always pessimistic and hopeless when reacting to the news. My friends told me they will be in debt for the rest of their lives just to buy a tiny house. They are working non-stop. People will say you are not working enough if you don't OT. <laughs> also, people say, this city is dying. But trust me, I know what a dying city looks like because I have been there. <laughs> Young people say they want a better future in somewhere else. And I say, why not build a better future here together? So I knew that I wanted to cheer people up. I wanted to make people laugh. I wanted to make people happy. That is how in February 2017, Surreal HK was born. My surreal life in Hong Kong. It's a way of expressing myself, using my imagination to create different perspectives of common situations, using Photoshop as a tool. I did not know if anyone would like my photos. I did not know how would they react. I ignored all my fears, doubts, and any uncertainties, and I tried it. So, I sat on a star ferry. <laughs> I made a giant panda eat a building. I floated this tree to let a dragon ball pass. I made a taxi fly. I brought a beach to Victoria Harbor. And I even make Hong Kong snow. <laughs> Out of my expectations, a year later, Surreal HK had 25,000 followers on Instagram. I was featured on several magazines, newspapers, and I even had an exhibition of my work. Every day, I will receive a lot of comments from my followers telling me how much they liked the photos and how happy they were to look at them. And without realizing it, I found friends again. I found my home. I found myself again. You don't know what twists and turns life has in store for you. One moment. Everything can be perfect, but after one event, one small change, one unexpected difference, everything can flip. What was once a bright, shiny life can be gloomy and depressive. However, my point is that you cannot let this darkness become a permanent state of you. You cannot give up everything at the face of ambiguity. It might, right now, presently, seem like there is no tomorrow, but there is always a new tomorrow. There is always opportunity for you to find the light in the darkness. Some people in this room might be in the greatness of uncertainty. Some may face it in the future. However, as an individual who was in a bad situation, I wish to tell you, all of you here today, ambiguity, toughness, and uncertainty, yes, this is all scary, but it's not the end result. 
I did not initially come to Hong Kong because of my own independence choice without any external influence. If Venezuela had political stability, I would probably have never confronted the initial dilemma of either continuing to stay in Venezuela or moving to Hong Kong. When I came to Hong Kong, everything was uncertain. But during such terms, I was motivated to face the challenge. And one year later, I'm using my photographic and editing skills to send out a message and encourage to Hong Kong locals who may be depressed. Everyone has a talent. Mine was having a creative mind. I unleash it using Photoshop. You just need to discover what your talent is, your skills, what you're good at, and then throw all your energy and work with that in something that you feel passionate about. Although it may not appear to be so, your darkest hours can be your brightest opportunities. Your most uncertain times can allow you to strengthen your conviction. Your most helpless day may in fact act to help the powerless. Thank you. <laughs>